YouTube, what's going on, baby? It's your boy Ron Real, aka Double R, back in the building, back with another video, back with another damn banger. First of all, I want to say I appreciate everybody that has subscribed to the channel. We have finally hit 5,000, man. Huge milestone for me and Eric over here. Something I knew that probably would happen in due time, but just did not know it would happen this quickly. So I'm very appreciative for all of the people that have decided to subscribe, see what I have going on with the channel. And as promised, this video is the humidor tour for me. As many know that I'm not a huge fan of humidor tours and stuff myself. I always felt like it was more so like dry bragging. But around 2,500, 2,600 subscribers, some people started asking me more and more. And I told everybody that once I hit 5,000, I'd go ahead and do a humidor tour video. So I'm a man of my word. So y'all hang tight. Stay tuned. We're going to get at it. All right, Double R Army, so we're gonna start this humidor tour off with my downstairs unit. This is the New Air 250 count. If you've been following me recently, you know I did a product review over the New Air 250. As I stated in this video, this will be the unit that I keep downstairs here in the studio room where I do all my recording and shooting and stuff like that. Very practical, very good down here. I'm able to keep about 180 cigars, so that's plenty for me. I got a couple of boxes, a lot of singles in here, but Nothing, nothing much more really to be said about this unit. I keep it at 64 degrees. Humidity for me down here is gonna range between 62 and 65, so that's how I like it. I like my cigars around, you know, I like them to stay cool. But uh, that's pretty much it as far as this. It stays next to my new air unit on top of this table. Pretty nice, clean, simple setup. So without further ado, we'll open the door up, see what I got inside. All right, so as I was saying before, you wanna make sure this door is all the way open. Be careful, gotta be very careful with these. That's why I don't have them super, super loaded to the max because it's just the probability of stuff falling out is very high. I wish New Air would, on this next model or something would just create a ridge right here to, to stop them from moving. But uh, we'll look through a couple of these cigars. I'm not going to go through everything. We'll be here all day. As you guys see, I got a couple of Bova de Packs in here. Nothing too crazy, just 69%. So we'll look through a couple of these. First one is the Viaje Private Keep Chartreuse from 2020. One of my favorite cigars, probably a land in the top 10 somewhere. So got a couple of those. This cigar is really hyped. I'm sure you guys will see a review of this soon. The Paul Stulak Exclusiva. Exclusiva, sorry. But uh, this was sent to me by Mystical Gent. Appreciate that, brother. So I definitely will be reviewing it sometime soon. Charter Oak Maduro from Summer Showdown. Shout out to Steve Zingle at Los Kaidos, man. For the firefighters out there. This cigar is made of Aganor. It's a great cigar. Rocky Patel Platinum. This was sent to me by Smoking Preacher. Uh, as you guys know, I love the Aganor Leaf Signature Selection Corona Gorda. Fantastic cigar. Got some Black Label Trading Company Bishop's Blend. Still got to smoke and review this one too. Got a couple of Cohibas in here. This is an old one. Uh, as I mentioned before, I'm going to probably start a segment called The Lost Files. This will be in there. This is a Tatawahe Kruger. This is probably a three-year-old cigar. Last one I got. It was a great cigar. I smoked through quite a few boxes of those. Uh, we got the Bellicoso Limited Edition La Kareem. Another great cigar. Kind of getting hard to find with that broadleaf shortage. Got another black label trading company, Lawless. Cinco de Cades Torpedo. Uh, another cigar that's got a lot of hype behind it, I'll be reviewing at some point soon, too. The Viva La Vida. I've smoked through a couple of these already. Got a nice band to it, made by AJ Fernandez. Uh, let's see what we got. If you're a member of the Black Line Luxury Cigar of the Month Club, you'll know that cigar, the T, Maduro Robusto. Great cigar. Probably one of my favorite Southern Draws, uh, Lustrum Kudzu. Got a tyrannical buck, Maduro. Uh, let's see. Got some in Bombay in here. Just trying not to get too much stuff out of place. It's hard to put this stuff back up. Now, this is a cigar you guys know I love, HVC, the Viaje Cosation number one. 
This was an, this was an exclusive for Marvin Chang over in Hawaii. Wasn't a real big fan of this. Me and Lee Mac both uh, split a box on this one and smoked a couple. Wasn't a huge fan of it. I'm gonna let them sit for a while. I like the Viaje Cosation number two far more. You guys know that cigar, Cigar Madness participant. Bellicoso signature selection, fantastic. Uh, this is a this is a really interesting cigar too. I'll probably review this at some point soon. This is by Jocelyn Crawl, the the F the FDA cigar. It's actually a really really good cigar. I know that band's kind of hard to see, but it's a lion on it. Another really good cigar. Uh, this is from Small Batch. This is their uh, Claudenstein. I wasn't a huge huge fan of this either. I'm gonna let this sit a little bit and smoke it again, and see what I think. More HVC. Uh, we got the Hamlet 2020 and the 2019. The Liberation is a really good cigar. I haven't smoked the 2020 yet. These are both fantastic. And you'll see on the bottom of this one, uh, it's got a brush foot on it. So, even though this cigar was trash, in my opinion, it's always going to have a special place for me. This was the first time me and Lee Mac did a collaboration, The Daughters of the Wind. Wasn't a huge fan of this cigar. I'm let, it's been sitting for a while now. I may smoke it over, over Christmas or something and see if it's doing any better. Just an okay cigar for me. More FDFDA, more Coastal Lustrums. Uh, oh, we got the Gent. This is by Cornelius and Anthony. The Gent is a really good cigar. This, this company's not around anymore, so this will probably be in the Lost series too. If you guys see any Cornelius and Anthony cigars, they're usually pretty good, especially with some age on them. And we'll look at... You guys know that I speak highly about this cigar all the time too. Aladino Corojo Reserva Toro. Like the Robusto more, but this is still a fantastic cigar. And only other non-duplicate in here, we got the Cohiba Nicaragua. Shout out to PDF, he sent me this too. So that'll be it for the top shelf. Uh, next we got the drawer. Little Fuente pack. Uh, let's see if there's anything interesting in here. These are these are pretty solid. This is a black-owned cigar company that Lee Mac has already reviewed. I'll be reviewing them at some point too. The Emperor's Cut. Got it in two different sizes. It's supposed to be a really good cigar. One of my favorites. Cowboy reviewed this one, man. I sent him a, sent him one of these, the Illusion Alt 10 or Holt 10. A little pit, little fantail on it. Uh, we got the last Cowboy. Let's see how it has the candela foot on it. I think I got another size of that in here too. Maybe. I'm sure it'll come up at some point. All right, more in Bombay. See if anything else. Oh yeah, so this is a special edition Steve Saka cigar too. The Red Meat Lovers. Haven't got a chance to smoke this one yet, but I will definitely do that. Uh, got a Bolivar. Come. Come, uh, can't even think of the name of it. Comfreda, something like that. Cowboy sent me this too. Appreciate that, Cowboy. Nova Corona. As I've told you guys before, a huge fan of these Illusione Ipernes for my Cuban guys. Trying to smoke New World cigars. Check that out. Really good cigars. Uh, punch Egg Roll. It's, it's coming out again, so I will review this cigar. Uh, let's see. More or Daddy Mac by Cornelius and Anthony. Got some drunk chicken in here. Got a Leo X Nova. I will definitely be reviewing this cigar again, or reviewing this cigar, the La Flor Dominicana 25th anniversary. Fantastic cigar. Not the cheapest, but a really good cigar. Let's see if there's anything. Oh, we got a Luciana, a Luciana one off in here. Man, crown heads. Uh, we got an MS Dele Robusto. I've always loved that, that shaggy foot on the bottom of it. Or closed foot, sorry. Uh, more egg rolls. Let's see what we got. Carl Malone by La Aurora. Mil Diaz Edmundo. Shout out to my brother Kareem too. I'll be reviewing this at some point. The Davidoff Art Edition. 
Oh yeah, here's the other here's the other last cowboy I have. You see how it's different? Has their their crazy foot on it. Candela ropes around it. And we have the Casa Fernandez from 2015, the Lancero. Another excellent cigar. And then we have another cigar that'll probably make an appearance on the top 10 for this year too. The uh, Casa Fernandez Miami Anniversario Cuban 109. These aren't the best for, or for, or, uh, <laughs> for photography. The band's not, but it's still a gorgeous cigar. Got some Guardian of the Farm Apollo. Another great cigar. One of my daily smokers love this cigar. Uh, let's see. Signature Selection. Maduro. Corona Gorda. Telling you guys, anything that I talk about, it's not just me talking. I actually smoke this stuff. Uh, let's see if there's anything else. It's an Aganorsa special or uh, event only cigar. You only can get them when Aganorsa is doing events. More in Bombay. Got CLE, some more CLE in here. Let's see. More Los Kaidos. Another tyrannical buck, just a different size. Connecticut. This is from Black Line Luxury Cigar of the Month Club, too. See. Try to, the trick is trying to fit this stuff all back in. Got a little Padron in here. Shout out to Kevin from Cigar Prop. This is from his sampler from Battle of the Bands. A little short guy. As you see, I don't have any rhyme or reason, man. I just put stuff where it, where it fits. I don't have, some people have their stuff divided by regions and Cubans away from everything else. I put, put everything with everything. I haven't run into any problems. Got another drawer. Try not to go over anything duplicate. So we got a Luciana Rex. Very small cigar, about six dollars. Great, actually a great little cigar. Now you saw the punch egg roll. We got the punch chop suey. Another great cigar. Got some warp future uh future row here with the famous Agonorsa 109 cap. Uh we got an Luciana Singulare. Seven Horns from 2019. I got a box of those upstairs. Great cigar. Very special cigar to me. Shout out to my brother, Jesse Mallard. I remember when I first started smoking, man, the Dunhill Heritage was one of my favorite cigars and it got discontinued. They got bought out by a cigarette company and uh, he was able to send me over a few cigars that he found. He's a fantastic, hard to find. Actually, you'll probably see that in the Lost Files too. Aladino Cameroon. Punch Knuckle Buster down there. This is a little, another little guy, Perdermo Firecracker. Real little cigar. Uh, let's see. The Numero Uno by Hoya de Nicaragua. Got a Skyflower by Warped. Big fan of these and the Don Ronaldo. Uh, got some Preferitos. Shout out to my brother, Alan Shepard. He sent me those quite a while ago to review. Just hadn't got around to it yet. We got the Ruby and the Emerald. Just little small cigars. We actually did the Diamond for August and Black Line Cigar of the Month Club too. So, uh, Blind Man's Bluff. We got Drew Estate, Lancero, Brother of the Leaf. Pereira Esteli Special Edition, Lancero. Got a numero uno on a different size. Everything else I think y'all seen already. So, Let's see, try to get all this, this stuff back where it's not moving. All right, some last groups of singles we got here. I'm sure you will see this cigar. You'll see this cigar reviewed at some point very soon. The Dissident Soapbox Robusto. Fantastic cigar. Fantastic. Got some El Wawense Bellicosos with the famous Agonorsa 109 cap on them. He's got a little age on them. Hoya de Nicaragua Cinco de Cades. And then we got one of my favorite cigars, Tennessee, Tennessee Waltz with the orange band. 
by Crown Heads. Fantastic cigar just came back in production, so you'll be seeing a review of this one too. The only boxes I keep in here. Uh, we got Crown Heads drumsticks from Headley Grange drumsticks from 2017. Great morning cigars. Great morning cigars. And this should be of no surprise. You guys know how I feel about HBC. I got both sizes of the Serie A. Smoked through a couple of these. Another really good cigar. Very Cuban-esque with a little bit more power to it. This is just a bigger Vitola. Smoked through those too. All right, well, that's pretty much this uh, New Era Humidor, what I keep downstairs as far as what I'm readily available to smoke when I'm sitting here in the studio room. So we'll go ahead and head upstairs and I'll show you what I got up there. All right, so we are upstairs in my main room. Uh, just want to give you guys a quick look at my desktop humidors. This is the Drew Estate Year of the Rat humidor that came out recently. They sent this to, I think, quite a few people. Um, I'm very appreciative of that. You know, so again, I want to give a huge shout out to Drew Estate for sending me this. As you see, it has a very nice topper on it. It's very well made desktop humidor. It's really nice. Got the digital readout on it. Has your temperature up there, relative humidity there. So that's nice too. As you see, open it up. Hadn't even started seasoning it yet. Got the nice tray. I would say, I, just looking at it, this probably holds around 100 cigars, something like that. It'd be a nice, nice addition. Maybe I might make it an exclusive through a state humidor. That might be what I end up doing. I don't know if you can hear that or not, but this actually has a very nice seal on it too. Just has, just douche, has it throw it. Very nice seal and it's kind of sticks, which is good for me. It's not loose. So again, huge shout out for Drew Estate for sending it out. Now, this is my main desktop humidor. And what's funny is I actually considered selling this a couple times but then i sat and thought about it and i was like no I, I really enjoy having this humidor and overpaid for it so it's kind of one of those things that this is just going to stay with me for for the long haul it's called the treasure treasure chest so don't have a lot of cigars in here but uh quite a few special ones uh i'll go ahead and lift this up so you can see that the bottom is empty because i'm running a little cold in here which is i'm i'm not surprised by that and it's not bothering me that it's a little cool it's running around 59 60 but um, a lot of people have questions and they'll, they'll have a humidor that might be rated for 200 cigars and they have 30 in their account or and they're just wondering like, why is it running so cool? Well, that's to be expected. You have to, you want, you want your humidor to be at around 70, 80% capacity. That's when it's going to run at an optimal level. So me knowing how that is, I expect my stuff to be a little cool right now. So uh, this is the Fuente size. So we'll go ahead and look through that right quick. Uh, we got a couple of Purple Rain 888s. Kind of a rare expensive cigar was gifted to me both of these were gifted to me i'm sure you'll see a review of them soon uh we got another version of the 888 the añejo one of my favorite cigars very budget friendly very good cigar another product of the añejo line my favorite añejo the 77 or the shark as people call it one of my favorite cigars uh let's see we've got an opus x lost city Probably my favorite Opus X, the Bellicoso XXX, or otherwise known as the Power Ranger. Uh, I believe this one's called the Love Affair, the Little Perfecto. I don't know if you can see on the bottom, it has a little tip on, a little tip on it. So I'm gonna call it the Love Affair. Uh, we've got a couple of Eye of the Sharks. See, it has that the same shape as the Inyeho 77, the shark shape. I want to give a huge shout out to my brother Matt Newman, too. He sent this over to me, too. This is the uh, Opus X from Dubai. So I'll be reviewing this probably sometime in December. And during the holiday seasons, I'll probably review this cigar. So huge shout out to you, Matt. Appreciate you sending it over for me, brother. All right. So we got a uh, Opus X Escuro. I know everybody's like, man, you got a lot of Opus X to be to not be an Opus X guy. You know, I get them for good prices or people have sent things to me, so I'll, I'll just keep them. I don't think they're bad cigars. I just have always said I think they're overpriced. And then uh, I'm not going to pull these out. 
but we'll kind of zoom. This is the 20 year anniversary. These are all four sizes of it. All four sizes. And you take a look at those there. All right, so put these back. And there's the Fuente. That's pretty much all the Fuentes I have in my um, collection. Like I said, I, I don't think Fuentes are bad. I just don't smoke a lot of them. Unless, or uh, I would say the Inyejo line is probably what I smoke the most of on the Fuente stuff. All right, so move the little boat over there. Y'all should be no stranger to this cigar. Padron 80th. Perfecto Maduro, fantastic cigar. Crown has lost Mireille's first run, 2015. Fantastic cigar. Last one. Uh, this was just recently in the club for Black Line Luxuries. La Ronja Escuro Lancero, another great cigar. Placencia, this. Now, what's interesting about this cigar is this is not sold in the American market. Fantastic cigar, but you, this is like a European release or a... Um, Special event release only. Uh, been planning on doing a review on this cigar for a while. Just haven't done it yet. My uh, grandfather passed away at 85 years old. So I'm going to do a tribute review to him. He wasn't a smoker or anything. But I felt felt that that was fitting in. I'm a Padron guy. So this video will be out some point soon too. Or we got five through five, six, seven, and, and eight of the La Flor Dominicana's Leo Gomez Small Batch. Some of these got some nice age on them too. Uh, this is a DB, it's DBL cigar. Got some Fumas from Aganorsa. Got the Corojo 99, Criollo 98. These are, these are kind of fun to smoke on their own. Uh, nobody's going to know about these. These are, these are a special blend from Black Lion that they had way before me and James were around. So, and these are pretty good cigars. 2018 Mule Kicks. Uh, let's see, another 2018. I uh, got a couple of 2012s. First, first, that's the first ever mule kick that they came out with, so it's pretty sweet. Uh, it's another 2012 JD Howard, another old school crown head cigar. Shout out to Victor Hot Desert Man. Uh, it's another 2012. This will probably be reviewed soon, too. This is the Warped El Oso. Another old cigar. Got the Paniolo 2020. Probably the best cigar I smoked in 2019, even though it's a 2020 release. I was privileged enough to smoke one with John in, in Nashville late last year. <clears throat> or uh, UF4 by Drew Estate. Without the pigtail, so it's a newer version. And that is pretty much what is in this desktop humidor here. These I never really ever go in this humidor. That's why the it doesn't bother me that it runs a little cool. What people uh, what I what I like to do, especially if I'm aging something for a long time, I like them to be at a cooler temperature. So, like I said, none of this bothers me that there's that's around 60 degrees, or I'm sorry, 60 relative humidity, not degrees. All right. Now. Uh, I won't we won't look into this one really. I ain't gonna worry about that one. We'll look at this one. So what I did is instead of doing the cabinet humidors like a lot of people do, they'll spend sometimes those cabinets, man, they'll cost a thousand all the way up to three, four, five thousand dollars depending on the size and the the um, features and stuff it'll have. So I ended up getting each one of these units for four hundred dollars. And for me, the most important thing is I say, I've told people all the time. I'm not very big into flashy and stuff. I just want a nice seal and I want a lot of capacity. So I was able to get both of these for $800 total, which is great. I could get, I got two of these for the si or for the cost of one wooden cabinet. So move this out the way real quick, but it's just an old drink machine. And, uh, I leave it unplugged because obviously the compressor would dry the cigars out if it was, if it was on, but it stays, I don't know if you can see in there. 64 on my relative humidity and 68 degrees very consistent all right got a partagas calibra and a partagas maduro number one these are cuban cigars that's half coronas just some little quick smokes 
These, I smoked the first two. They need some age on them, so I'm not really going to mess with these for a while. Uh, actually, let's look at the bottom first. We'll just take a look at the bottom. So, as you guys know, J.C. Newman came out the Yagua not too long ago, so I got some of those. I haven't done a review yet, but trust me, it's a very good cigar, very good price point. Big fan of it. Uh, this cigar was featured in August of Black Line Luxury Cigar of the Month Club. Got the La Aurora Preferito Diamond. Great cigar. Uh, another cigar I actually did a review of, but of course being a bonehead, man, I, I didn't have the settings on right, so the footage was kind of bad, so I didn't end up putting it out because I want you guys to have some good stuff to look at too, but uh, big, uh, pretty much a big fan of the um, Steve Saka. I'll pull one out for you. The Unstolen Valor. So of course you guys know these aren't really cheap cigars, but comes in the coffin. Oh, these are cool. So this is a uh, Lirio Rojos, which are from Warp. They come out every November, December, so around Christmas time every year. And uh, these are from 2016, November 2016. They come in this red foil paper and a red band. When I tell you these are great cigars, these are good. October cigar of the month, so it should be of no surprise that you guys see multiple boxes. As I told you guys, if I'm going to co-sign it, I like it. So you should see it. Uh, Aladino Corojo. Reserve it. I've only taken one out of here. It's a Toro. Great cigars. Uh, Supreme Leaf Toros. I got a gang of those. It's not even all of them, man. These are all full boxes. Hell, half of them got plastic still on them. I said, I, now that I got the new air downstairs, I really don't get up here too much unless it's something specifically that I want to smoke. This video, or this cigar was smoked during the thousandth cigar or a subscriber, the Opus XA, still in plastic. Probably won't smoke it for a while. Maybe I might smoke it next year for my birthday. Oh, let's see. All right, we got the Illusione Iperne La Martins. I mentioned earlier, uh, I had a box of Illusione Singulares from last year, the Seven Horns. And that's a great cigar. Uh, these are the newest additions to it. So these are from Southern Draw. These are the Fraternal Order Blue and Black. They just released. I just have smoked one of each. Uh, so far, I like the black one a little bit more than the blue, so I'm going to let them sit for a while and uh, see how they turn out. But both of them were good. Some Cornelius and Anthony, which is discontinued now. Let's see, more Cornelius and Anthony. Daddy Mac. Uh, Robusto Supreme Leaves. God of Fire. These are great. I don't smoke them much, man, just because it's just, they're kind of hard to come by and they're kind of expensive. But these are the Carlitos. These, the Carlito and the Serie B are my two favorites out of the God of Fire lineup. These are fantastic. Great cigars. Uh, let's see. Luzion Hot Tins. Full box of those still. Uh, this now this also came with a year of the red humidor. They sent they sent me a uh, full box of year of the reds too. As you guys know, I've already done a review of these too. So again, huge shout out to Drew Estate for that man. They didn't didn't have to do that. So really appreciative of that. All right, I think this is another gift from Drew Estate, man. Y'all would think I was sponsored by Drew Estate, but I'm not. Trust me, and I don't like all their cigars, but they uh, they've been good to me though. As you see, I've I pulled one year of the red out. I want to say I sent one to a friend of mine. That's why this one is gone. So, another gift from them. Man, this is also one of my favorite cigars, too. I like the presentation on this because it reminds me a lot of some of how some uh, Cubans will come in. The, I love this plastic box. 
But you see, a uh, special number count lets you know it's 14,750 boxes total made. The little plate there. And you open it up. Bam. Got your coin, certificate. Uh, I haven't smoked anything. Let's see, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nope, haven't smoked anything out of here yet. Probably be a minute. I got a couple, of, I think, well, maybe I did smoke my last single I had, so I probably will smoke out of, smoke out of this box sooner. All right. I did something kind of weird, but it was just kind of a personal thing for me. Sometimes I get really, I'm not OCD about stuff, man, but, uh, but this thing was kind of bothering me because I think it was the boxes were taking up too much space. So I didn't want that to happen. HVC 500 Selectos. Smoked a couple out of there. Good cigar. Not better than the original size though. This is the original size. This one blows the Selectos out the way. I mean, yeah, the Selectos out the way. This is the Tesoro. This was the first, first 500 size he came out with. As you guys see, I've already probably murdered through three or four boxes of these. Excellent, excellent cigar. All right, so you would think that this would just be a normal box of back-to-backs, right? This is a nice big size box. But what I did was I consolidated Supreme Leafs. So these are Supreme Leaf Robustos. I just didn't want all those boxes taking up all the space, so I just ended up taking all the boxes out and consolidating them actually some of the boxes over at the other or the other one are in there they're empty though but all the robustos are in here other than that one you guys saw earlier favorite drew estate cigar this is the i don't think this size yeah size empty uf 13 it's my absolute favorite drew estate cigar you guys uh, will probably remember, or if you've been following me long enough, I did do a review of that cigar too. If you haven't, go check that out. And of course, like I said, shout out to Steve Zingle. I have smoked through multiple boxes of these too. You guys know I'm Team Red with Team Firefighter, man. So, really cool setup that he has here. Always got to support the people supporting us, man. So, huge, huge shout out to him, man. Very nice guy too. Reminds me a lot of John Huber. Very personable. If I message or ask him a question or anything, he always replies back. He's not one of those Hollywood guys. Some of these owners out here just, I don't know, man. Guess they feel themselves. Now the most hectic area to get into. So top area, I'll go ahead and put these up too before I forget. All right, so you guys know, again, I'm not going to lie to you guys. If I say I like a cigar and I think it's box worthy, I'm going to have them here. The Lunatic Torch Visionaries is still a box-worthy cigar. Fantastic. Illusion Ipernay Diosto. This is one that got number seven from Cigar Aficionado last year. Great cigar. And this cigar is really crazy, too, because it uh, it doesn't utilize Lijero. Doesn't, doesn't utilize Lijero. So all my Cuban smokers, get on those Ipernays, man. Now, this is pretty, this is pretty funky here. This is... Um, this is a, this, I, as you guys know, it's funny. The first review that I've done or I did on the channel and I hated this cigar was from Padilla. I don't like a lot of his new stuff. These are from 2011. The old Miami 8 and 11. I don't know if I can even, you're not going to be able to tell from here, but the cellophane, it's not like as, as gold as I've seen, but it's got some age, man. These these old 8 and 11s are phenomenal. Phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal. But it's torpedo size. Casa Fernandez, the first ever anniversario edition. This was from like 2012. Don't worry, I've had some other ones. I've smoked them. And people be like, you ain't smoking any of your cigars. Yeah, I, trust me, I'm smoking cigars, man. I smoke cigars. 2014, this is a six and a half by, or six and a fourth by 52. Some of these, when I got, when I got, when I got them, they came in super wet, meaning they were just really humid. So I had to sit on, I smoked them. I smoked one right away to see where they were at. And uh, let me see, they just needed some time. Like right now they're good. They were so, they came in so wet that I could almost press them to or, uh, completely together. 
This is the two, the other 2015, the 6x56, the Celine. As you guys see, I, I like this one a lot too. Smell on these things are incredible too. Just a great cigar. Uh, as you see, no surprise, more HVC stuff. Edition of Special 2018. This is, uh, I like this too. It's very Cuban. It's with the paper. These are Coronas. I smoked quite a few of these. This was a uh, cabinet of 50. Some oil, oil, let's see. Let me, quite a few Cubans in here. These are really, really young. I bought these and smoked one. I was like, nope, they need some time. Epicure number two, probably one of the more popular Cubans out there. Uh, this was sent to me by Brother Brian Prentice. I'll be reviewing it at some point too. Monte Cristo Habano. I have to do some more research on it. I actually, when he sent that to me, I actually had never heard of it or smoked it. So I appreciate that too. He also sent me the Partagas Lucentanius that I did the review on. Uh, what else we got in here? That's saying Crystal Ball. And then, of course, we got the classic uh, Cohiba Robusto. That's got about three, four years age on it now. Just phenomenal cigar. Once these things get some age on them, and like I said, if the Cubans have a good draw and good construction, when they got their age, it's hard to compete. It's even for so Nicaraguan cigars. And as much as I love Nicaraguan tobacco, it's just hard to compete with a well-aged Cuban that performs well. HVC Black Fridays. What can I say? One of my favorite cigars. Always consistent. Always good. Fantastic cigars. Can't wait for the new size this year. The world's longest cigar box. I remember when I bought this from James, he was like, man, do you want the box or do you just want to uh, me to take this? I said, no, I want the box, man. Crazy big box. It's the Broadleaf. It came in uh, half Robusto, half Toro. I always thought that was cool. It's a crazy long box. And Bombay Sampler. Yeah, it was just some samplers with some stuff in there. Nothing, nothing crazy. More Supreme Leaf Toros. Smoked out of these. I think maybe the only person that might have smoked more Supreme Leafs maybe Terrence Riley. Shout out to T. Riley, man. Agonosa. Now, this is a Cuaba box, or Cu Cuaba box, but there is a Oya de, or a Oya de Monterey Epicure number twos in here. These are the ones I was saying that are extremely young. They just need some age. So... These are getting buried in the bag for quite some time. I'm probably, I probably won't think about smoking one until maybe the end of next year. They were that young, man. They just did not taste that good. Another super old box. This is from March of 2011. Got some super old stuff in here, man. Back before it was Aganorsa. Casa Fernandez. These are fantastic, too. I've smoked a couple of these but these are just look at that man just a just a beautiful cigar absolutely gorgeous got some crazy age on y'all know how those bands get to move and got some age on them yeah these are from 2011 uh you guys saw this featured in black line first month magicos la rosa another great cigar good maduro this is another really old cigar too. I didn't realize how much old stuff I got in here, man. Oh, y'all probably saw it on the live stream. This is from, uh, this is Namakubi by Room 101. This is probably about a six or seven year old box. Paper is just super delicate, man. You can just tell how, how thin it is. Oh, Namakubi's. Smell on this thing is in, intense too. If you just open it, it just comes out. I always like how you pay homage to the, the artwork and stuff like that on these. Just the attention to detail has always been really nice. We have some Cubans now. We got part of his shorts. Smoked a couple out of those already. You guys know the trick already. I've shown you guys in multiple videos. Oh, maybe I, uh, yeah, hold on, hang tight. 
I don't know if it's gonna pick up. Everybody probably hasn't seen the the uh, unboxing video yet, but you'll see in the stamps. See the seal in the middle, two dots up here, two dots below. Got our date code. So these are pretty young. These are from 19. Not that old. Uh, we got some Romeo wide church heels. Again, you guys see the, the dots. These are fairly young too. Yeah, these are, these are all from 19, so these will all be sitting for a while. Telling you again. See, I haven't touched any of those yet, and, and I probably won't for a while. But they're just, man, I tell you, just smell incredible, man. All right, you guys know favorite Cuban brand, Bolivar. I've been wearing these out. As y'all can see, the paper sunk in. I've been killing these. These are the uh, Petite Coronas. And we got some Royal Coronas. I'll get there in a second. Been smoking these, but not as much. I believe these were kind of... Uh, yeah, these are from May of 19. Grab this paper real quick. So these are these are all fairly young. That's why I was saying. So it's uh it's kind of harder to find the age stuff. Most of the time, if you find a website that'll sell you some age stuff, they're gonna charge you a little bit more because they're already aged. But um, most of mine are from 19. I think I got a couple maybe from 2018. Got some Partagas Fury D number sixes. These are another another great cheap cheap good Cuban. As you see, I'm halfway through this box too. Halfway through. Might even end up smoking a Cuban this evening, man. Hadn't had one in probably a month. February of 19, so almost two years old. Placencia Alma Fuerte Salamones. all over the place on these caught a really good deal where I was pretty much getting these for ten dollars a pop I was going through boxes like crazy you're getting a twenty dollar cigar half off I, I would I would hope that you would too another full box this one hadn't been been opened at all like I was telling you guys I caught a really good deal on it the, I know y'all remember the Viaje Cosation number ones that were Hawaiian exclusive earlier these are the Viaje Cosation number twos. One of the few HVCs that is not a Parejo. Got the sharp head, taper foot. All right, next thing we're gonna look at is some Trinidad Reyes. So I've been smoking through these. These are a really, really small cigar. Good morning time smoke. Uh, I'll pull one of these out. Just a really, really small cigar. It's funny how you always hear people say that they you can't get, or Cubans are all expensive, and that's not the case. You can get a lot of these for far under $10 a cigar, which for me, I think is pretty fair. Trinidad Vegas. I just got these in. These are, I never, this is from September of 19, so they're just a year old. Like I said, I'm, I'm not going to mess with these anytime soon. A little shorter, it's short like the Raz, but just much fatter. Looking forward to these. I'm gonna probably at least let this stuff sit a couple years before I mess with it. Uh, man, I've been wearing these out too. Some of my favorite Cubans, H Upman 46s. Now, these were from October of 18, so these are two years old now. Actually, I may end up smoking. I need to order another box, so I'll probably end up smoking through the rest of this and then ordering another box. But these are good, man. These might be the oldest ones I have in. Maybe. I love the uh, Magnum Magnum series by Upman. They do a really good job. Now, it was these really cool, these uh, Wheels of 50. This is the Poor Lauren Yaga Petite Corona. These are only a year old, too. I smoked one before on a live stream. And just uh, they're just still young, too. So I'm going I'm to chill out on those. I'll pull out this wheel for you guys. See if how it looks. How you remove it is 
and there's your wheel of 50. I'm gonna pull it all the way out. Sometimes it gets kind of kind of rough to put back in. But yeah, these are these are all sitting in the back. No plans of smoking anytime soon. And last but not least, we got us a cabinet of Ramon Alone Specially Selected. I know my Uncle Lee Mac loves these two. These are from 2019 as well, so these are still fairly young. I know this is pretty much his favorite Cuban cigar. We were talking about the uh, wheels of 50 a couple months back. So there you there you have it. Got this wheel up here. I've always just been a huge admirer of Wheels of 50. They just look really vintage and cool, man. That is pretty much the gist of what you see with Ron Real, man. As I've told you guys before, there are people out there with way crazier collections. I've told you guys I like to keep my stuff very simple. That is how I like it. So, I'm going to put the rest of these cigars up. Probably decide what Cuban to smoke tonight, and that's going to be it. So, appreciate y'all for tuning in. Y'all already know the name of the game is relaxation and enjoyment. And damn sure, don't forget to be driven, never motivated. Peace.